Hmm. Does that look normal? Let's get it tested. Hey everyone, Tino here, aka The Dirty Quant, and welcome back to the channel. We're going to do a little five minutes to intro to stats. This is a, um, a test which I think everyone should know. It's sort of just one of those little things that should be in your toolkit, in your arsenal when handling data. And uh, it's really to test whether the data is normal. Big assumptions and a lot of... Uh, you know, downstream processes that we do, you know, think, oh, the data is going to be normal. Well, how do you know it's normal? You can even like, you know, look at a distribution, but you know, you can be fooled. So let's, uh, let's see how we actually uh, tackle that. All right, cool. So we're going to be using something called a Jacques Berra test. I believe that's uh, Carlos Jacques and Anil Berra, um, you know, Mexican and Indian gentleman that came up with this and it's actually pretty simple and actually pretty powerful. So what it does it actually tests, it takes a sample from the data, so the, the data that you've got and see, see, uh, looks for two things, skewness and kurtosis and checks, do they match a normal distribution, right? Simple as that. So intuitively it's actually quite, quite straightforward. So we calculate a test statistics. Well, we don't, we can use a package, but you know, I think you should probably code this up yourself. I think it'd be useful, but very, very straightforward, right? So. I'm going to be looking at this item here with the n that's your sample size so how many you have and this is a, a test that actually expects a large sample size so if you've got a small sample size it's sort of problematic and by big i mean it's going to be about 2k plus right otherwise uh, issues arise but anyway let's just say you've got lots of data in this world in this uh, data laden uh, world uh, it's easy to find it cool so we've got S, that's the sample skewness right here. So don't have to go into the into the details. It's pretty straightforward. Take the data, demean it, or you know, third moment, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then we'll do the same for, for kurtosis. So we've got S and K, plug them in the formula, gives us the value, and then we see, okay, is it normal, is it not? Right. So as always, let's generate some random data and see what it looks like. So um just gonna drain really massive data set here. So 10, 100,000 data points, right? Huge, 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 right? So what I'm gonna do, generate the data save it to this variable called norm data, put it in our Jacques Berra test. So if we run it, we get two things. One is the actual test statistic, which is sort of, I guess, hard to interpret. interpret. Is it a big or a small value? I don't really know. Uh, well, I do, but you know, you, you, can't, you can't intuitively use it. What we were interested in is this p-value. So that's 55%, right? 0.55, 55%, pretty big. So the rule of thumb, or the rule is, if it's above, let's just say, pick 5%, pick one, as you wish, type A, type B error, pick your poison, right? If the, that p-value there is above 5%, which it is, then we fail to reject the null hypothesis, and hence the data is not statistically different from normal. What it's saying, so look, I don't like saying accept and normal. Uh, no. uh, I think that's just a bad practice. I think you should just say, look, fail to reject, accept the, the null, but, you know, um, I don't like saying accept the null. So we fail to reject the null, and hence the data is not different from normal. We can't certainly say that something is, okay, we're going down the philosophical path. All it's saying here is this is normal. Okay, so this is normal. And you sort of would expect that. You would expect that. But I'm just going to show you just, you know, using this random data, what can happen sometimes, right? Cool. So pretty straightforward. And look, this T, this test statistics and the p-value, they're inversely sort of move in opposite directions. If you get a uh, a very large uh, test statistics, you're going to get a small p-value and a sort of vice versa. All right, so here we've got a small test value and a, and a large uh, I mean, p-value, right? Because one's big, one's small. Sweet. Um, what, so we were testing for ketosis. So that's like you know, your sort of peakiness or how big your, your tails are, right? Um, this here, uh, you can use Fisher or Pearson, pick your poison. I'm more of the Pearson camp where I think that three is normal. So you actually have to add three or flick the variable uh, here to, instead of Fisher equals true, you go uh, Pearson equals true, fine. I just like to add three, whatever. So three tells us this is normal. This is really, really close. Of course it is. I sampled it from, you know, a normal distribution, perfect. And then skew. So zero is perfectly skewed. You know, if not, we we are skewed uh, positively or negative, you know, to the left or to the right. 
Sweet. So that's sort of what we expect. There's not much magic here. The issues arise. Okay, let's just pick a data set that's completely not normal. So I'm going to pick a data, uh, a data set that's gamma distributed. If you don't know what that is, it looks a little something like this, right? So it starts at the big at the at the beginning. It's got a big peak, and then it sort of tails off, you know, all the way to sort of some uh, some big number, right? completely not normal this is you look at that you go well, that's no chance that's normal right so what does it look like what, what's running the test on this looks like so if you run for normality okay cool check it out look we've got giant beautiful massive the biggest ever in our country uh test statistics thirteen thousand. if you compare it to the one that we did on the normal we get like one point one point one whatever it is right and we look at the uh, the p value tiny or zero right because this is like there is just absolutely no chance that this is uh, is normal right so um it's definitely 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 different from normal and it looks different from normal i mean that was an obvious one right what <laughs> the trick the tricky part is is when these sort of like border cases you know borderline cases it looks normal but it's not so check this out so um, yeah, super high stat, low p-value, no chance that's normal. If we were to generate random normal data, let's say uh, 10,000 times, right? So I'm just gonna keep picking distribution. And each time there's 5,000 data sets inside of it. So I'm number crunching a lot. So each, each time I'm gonna run the uh, JB test on it and see and get the p-value. What does that look like? So I'm literally, I think of it in this sort of this way, you know, you've got a machine that generates spheres or balls right okay cool We've got my generating ball generating machine and then i go i put it in my ball checking machine right and it says okay is this a sphere is this not and you know you should you should always pass the test right because it's it literally came from the machine i'm testing it with but the machine i'm, I'm actually generating it from is you know there is some sort of error in there right how much of an error is there let's have a quick look all right i'm just going to run this just takes a couple of seconds And it's done, beautiful, right? So I'm not just gonna run this line quite yet, but this is, so what I've done, I run, I've got generated some data, uh, random normal data, and it's a size 5,000, and I've did that 10,000 times, right? And each time I ran the J JB test on it, and then I extracted the p-value from it and saved it to uh, a variable called my data. If I were to plot this variable, uh, my data this is what it looks like so it's pretty much uniform right so what what is it telling me so because i'm actually some sampling from the null the proportion of p the p value is exactly the same you know the the, the incidence is exactly the same as the p value so look if i just look in that in that list called data how many are below one percent i get exactly one percent because that's the sort of error that I expect. Even though we sample from the null, I it's actually got rejected. Let's say if I were to pick 5%, look at that, 4.8%. So even though it literally generated from, uh, was it SciPy or whatever it is, normal, in 5% of cases, one in 20, you, it's gonna fail the test, right? So you gotta be aware of that. And this is not even like data that I got from, you know, from, from the root. I mean, this is from just randomly generated data and it failed one in 20 times. It's going to fail this JB test. Oh, it's actually going to have a p-value that's really, really low. Might not be five, but it might be 5.1, 5.2, all the way. You know, you sort of expect it always to be high, but actually because I'm actually getting the test and the, the, the generation process are actually really, the matched, perfectly matched, you get that exact proportion of that p-value. That's what is really there. It's saying, look, I can make mistakes and in proportion to 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 what you pick all right sweet got that out of the way uh, i'm just going to build this little guy so what we can do here is what i've got here i've got a little little cheeky little slider uh i've got a student t distribution so what i want to do is like okay well if i've got a student t if you remember student t if you got really high new or degrees of freedom it starts to approach normal if I slide that degrees of freedom so it gets more and more fat tails, at which point does it fail the JB test, right? 
So if I were to crank this all the way to the to the right, 200, right? So after about, I don't know, 30, 40, 50, I don't know, whatever, it's really, really indistinguishable from normal. If you look at here, there is actually a blue line, right? And I've actually got normal and uh, student T plotted on the same thing. And here what I've got, I've got this a, a blue line, which is the 5% confidence level, and then the p-value from the test. And he's saying, look, p-value is 26%, uh, the data uh, looks normal, and this sort of should be. I can just keep sliding this around. And he said, oh, look, degrees of freedom went down a little bit. Yep, data still looks normal. But look at this red bar. As I move it, it bounces around. And look, look at that. 183 degrees of freedom, which if you ask anyone, that's essentially normal. It's not even 1% and it failed. You know, this is like, okay, well, data does not look normal. Look at this, all right? There is a blue line there. Does that and that, do they look like materially different? Am I missing something? Like they look like really, really close. Like, I don't know where it is, but it failed the test, right? And the reason is, because of this, because I'm just keep sampling and sampling. Eventually, I'm going to get a low value just by chance, right? So that's exactly what is going on here. So let's just reset these axes. I'm just going to keep sliding this. And you can actually observe that blue line is starting, to, will start to digress. Don't, don't focus on the right. It's going to be bouncing around yet, whatever. Uh, follow, on the left, that blue line, all of a sudden, maybe around 30 or 40, is going to start to diverge away from the, uh, the blue and red move away. There we go. All right, cool. So we've got a student T starting to get those sort of fat tails. I'm going to push it all the way down to sort of its limits, which is two. And that's really, really obvious. Obviously, data does not look normal. P-value, very, very small. That's what we expect. I don't need a test to tell me that these two are not the same. As I start to crank it up, all right. I mean, anything past about 20, they start to like get really, really, really close. Data does not look normal. Keep going, keep going. After about 30, 40, on, now focus on the right, that red bar is just bouncing around all over the place, right? But it's going to be you know, proportionally bouncing around a lot less around 200, or it's gonna actually going to be under that 5% confidence level 5% of the time uh, around, you know, maybe above 50, let's say, uh, rather than sort of down here, because I can get a really low degrees of freedom and it could still say, oh, this is actually normal when it's clearly not. Uh, let's just have a look. All right, you can see uh, once in a while that uh, red bar does cross over that uh, 5%, even though we've got low degrees of room. That's it. That's the JB test. Really simple. You'll see it in loads of packages. You're not going to run... I mean, you can run like a battery of tests, and this is like one of the things, but, you know, there's like tons of things, QQ plots. I mean, you know... Instagram, just looking at it, using your eyes. Your eyes are pretty good. Don't have a go at the eyes because that is a stigmatism okay. that I've had from the age of five. So that's what makes them a bit bulbous. Uh, and this is just more formalities, right? Uh, just to get an idea, is this normal? Okay, as long as you're aware, as long as you don't treat it as such, uh, I think you're good to go. All right, hope you enjoyed that one. Catch you in the next one. Cheers.